God bless all my brothers and sisters. To God be all the glory. I'm excited about this teaching tonight. I know it's been a while, but the main thing is, is that we have to re always remember, like I always tell y'all, God's timing is the best. So, you know, I'm just, um, you know, uh, I move as God tells me and, and, and do what he tells me to do. So I'm excited um, about this teaching. And I pray that you all uh, will be blessed. And to know that whenever I make these videos, I'm sorry, I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking, but um, whenever I make these videos, I only make them as the Lord um, directs me. So I only do what the Father tells me to do. So I pray that everyone is blessed. Um, as they uh, listen and tune in, hopefully everyone has their um, pens and, and pencils. And I know most of you see the title that I have, and excuse my wrinkled shirt, but you know, I'm only here to please the Lord. So um, I just threw on a shirt. The other one I had on was a, uh, a little dirty. So I'm just here to, to just uh, please Jesus. So, um, that's all brothers and sisters, you know, that's, that's what I'm here to do. But I see that, uh, um, many see the title that I have today and, you know, it's so funny because I, it, it's been such a long time since I made a video. I don't even know, <laughs> you know, uh, where to even start, you know, um, of course I'm only going to speak on the influence of the Holy spirit, but it's been so long. Um, so I'm happy to see you all, but, um, honestly and truthfully, you know, um, I've been spending a lot of time with the Lord. You know, when I say a lot of time, I mean receiving instructions, direction, you know, just everything. You know, God speaks to me as a man speaks to his friend. So I'm listening. I have a notebook just full of things, full of wisdom, full of knowledge, revelations, um, instructions, uh, much of things I haven't shared to Facebook and, you know, different things to that. But, uh, and God also has been telling me to encourage people. I have so many teachings that he has given me so i don't have to make teachings all the time there's hundreds and hundreds of teaching all through my page you know what i mean there's even a teaching the lord gave me breaking down every book in the bible explaining what six all six books mean from genesis revelations explaining the titles of the book i mean the, the names of the books what the books means what took place in the bible what took place in those books every book the lord has given me uh the the instructions and the, and the wisdom on what they mean and what they stand for. So the point I'm trying to make that there's so many teachings for you, you know, and um, I, I, I don't have to make videos every day and every other week, you know, especially if people haven't even seen, you know, the first hundred or the first 200, you know, that's up here on my page. And if people were to study and read them every day, I mean, watch them every day and take notes, I mean, they'll grow because it's nothing but the word of God under the influence of the Holy Spirit you know, giving teachings and, 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 and teaching and instructing, you know, so that's why the Bible say in Colossians, whom we warn, you know, teaching all men and preaching all men, teaching all men and, and, and preaching and teaching in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, you know, in Jesus Christ. So, you know, I don't really have that many verses today. I just, God just gave me a few, you know, and, um, this message is similar to the message that I made last year, but um, it's a blessing because many Christians don't know the cost that you have to pay to be a disciple. Many don't understand that when the Lord spoke in those parables and when the Lord gave the, 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 the short stories of when a seed fell on good ground or, you know, when a man built a house or, or the house that was built on sand and the house that was built on rock or, you know, when a king goes to war and he only has 10,000, you know, don't he first sit down and send an ambassador peace to see if he's able to go against the 20,000. So many will only give you, you know, what they believe is the word of God, you know, but they don't truly know because many don't have the Holy Spirit to really understand. That's why many are going to Bible colleges. You know, many are going from church to church, being deceived, being deceived, you know, looking for that warm and, and fuzzy feeling instead of looking for the word of God. 
the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the power, the church of Acts. Every church should look like the church of Acts, no matter where it's at. If you're not seeing miracles, signs, and wonders, healing, deliverances, the prophetic, I mean, just like the church of Acts, it is not a living church. Remember, the, the word of God prepared us for everything that's coming today. It said in the last days, some would depart from the faith. It said that many false prophets, false teachers will be out here. You got to think that's our generation. Even though you might say the Bible was written 2,000 years ago, but you got to understand, long as there's people that's going to believe and not believe, those words are for every generation, right? So think about, I don't know how old everyone is, you know, but I know how old I am and I'm 31. So once I die off, our children's children are going to be adults and, you know, it's going to be their generation. They still have to follow the word of God. There's still God and it's going to still be Satan unless God comes back while in our generation while we're here today. But if not, guess what? Then the same temptations, the same provokes, the same, you know, uh, false preachers, prophets. Remember, they, the reason the Bible can, can give us all these things because people make a choice. Either they're going to choose the way of God or they're going to choose the way of the world. So for every generation, remember, even before we were born, there was people that was false preachers. There was false teachers. Just go on Google. Go on, on YouTube. You can see people from the 60s and the 70s that were deceiving Christians. You can see people that was around, you know, laying hands and, you know, giving false prophecies even way before we were even born. So every generation, because there's demons in every generation, there's, there's the word of God, there's, there's Christianity in every generation. So if we die off and our parents don't do, if I'm not speaking the truth, what happened with David? David was the only king that kept God's commandments. He was the only king that walked in his statues. Solomon started off, but then he deviated. Start worshiping strange gods and marrying those those strange women. You you read on down all those different kings of Judah and Jerusalem. Read First King and Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. You'll see where a lot of those did evil in the sight of God. Only Hezekiah, Jehoshaphat, you know David, and a few others did what the Lord wanted them to do. But majority of them did the opposite, and they were children's childrens of David. They were David was their great great grandfather. That's right. So you understand, brothers and sisters? So if all I can do is raise my children up the right way, but once I'm dead and I'm gone, it's up to them to, to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. So just how you got me being used from God, you're going to have Satan raising up people that he's using to deceive and to, you know, water down the gospel and to teach false doctrine, prosperity messages, you know, all, all that great stuff. So you understand? So the Bible is for every generation. You just can't look at it and say, oh, you know, it's going to come. It's already here. Even Paul and them already said the Antichrist has already come and it's around us now and it's going to come later on. So they were already experiencing false brethren. Read the book of um, 3 John. He talked about how the church that, was, that they was writing to spoke malicious to them, you know, uh, spoke evil. You know, they were once running right. That's why you read in Acts when they were saying that you had to be circumcised. You know, you had to follow the, the, the Moses laws in order to be, you know, circumcised. Remember, they wrote to the brothers in Judea and other places and told them, you know, that it was brothers that was once with us that's going around per, sub, um, subverting the truth. That's right. Because it's not about how you start, but how you finish. That's why Paul said in Galatians, if me, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than what you have received of us, let him be a curse. That's right. So it doesn't matter who's starting off talking about Jesus. Satan will come with many temptations, pride, lust, you know, money, everything, you know, popularity, and all, all those things will cause a man to fall. Read about Samson Delilah. Read about Saul. So you see, these are the ways that Satan works. So you, every Scripture that you see is for our generation. Don't be deceived saying, oh, all the false prophets are going to come. Brothers and sisters, go on Facebook. You have never seen so many people calling themselves prophets as you have seen in 2018. You have never seen as many. You go through Facebook and look at some of your friends that you knew two years ago. They call themselves prophets. Women call themselves prophetess, looking just like the world, not even prophesying. 
The Bible said that prophecy is for edification, for comfort, and for exhortation. Prophecy was never given for people to give you what you want or to speak what you wanted to hear. It was always to correct you, to teach you, and to pressure you into doing the will of God. That's what edification means, to teach. Exhortation is to pressure, to persuade, to comfort, is to give you the comfort from the word of God. That is the, that, that the, the, the Bible say, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You see? So the word of God brings understanding. It brings clarity. You know, it brings comfort when you let your soul rest in it. So this was true prophecies. You've never seen prophets of the old. You know, look what the prophet said to Paul. He said, whoever owns this belt will be bound, you know, in Jerusalem and will be at the, will be at the you know, the mercy of the, of the Gentiles. You didn't see him say, yeah, Paul, you're a great man. God's going to bless you. God's going to use you so mightily. Oh, you're a great man. When you go to Jerusalem, you're going to get everything you want. You're going to get a house. You're going to get a loft. Come on, brothers and sisters. This is, this is the, the spirit of, of divination. This is what you read about in Acts with the fortune teller girl. She's able to predict the future. Acts 16, verse 16 and 17. And it came to pass that we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed, take note of that, with the spirit of divination. Google the word div divination. That means fortune telling. So Satan has power to see into the future. He's an angel. Remember, he's a fallen angel. So God didn't take his power. It's just limited on what he can do and what he can't do. If God chooses to intervene, he'll intervene. If God chooses not to intervene, he won't intervene because people are living in sin. So don't be deceived. It say the damsel was possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. That's right. Doing enchantments, different things of that nature. So stop being deceived when these false prophets and false teachers, preachers come to you and tell you, yes, God going to bless you with this, your husband, that job you've been asking for. When has any man of God in the Bible ever knew their future? Think about it. Joseph had two dreams. And even when he told his father, Israel, the one who wrestled with the angel of the dream he had, what did Israel say? Are we going to serve you? He was a man of God, but he couldn't see it because the dream wasn't for him. The interpretation wasn't for him. It was only for Joseph. Neither did Joseph know how God was going to use him. He was asleep one day and woke up. And this is what the Lord revealed to him. And he told his brothers they got jealous. And he told his dad, who was a man of God. But he couldn't see it because it wasn't meant for him to see. Because if, if Israel knew what Joseph was going to have to face in order to become the governor of Egypt, he would have stopped him naturally because he's a father. He wouldn't have wanted his son to, to, to experience the mischief that he experienced through his, his brothers. You see, understand, brothers and sisters? The nature of the father would have kicked in, just like the nature of the mother will kick in. You understand? So no one in the Bible ever knew their destiny. It was not told to Paul that he was going to be an apostle. When Ananias had the vision from the Lord, he said, there's a man named Saul that's praying to me. He said, go and do, 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 do. And I said, Lord, I heard of this man. He has persecuted the church, bound us, throw us in prison. He said, go for he's a chosen vessel of mine. And I will show how much he must suffer. For my name's sake, he never said how he was chosen. He never said what his calling was. He never said how he was going to suffer. You understand? When Peter first met Jesus, what did Jesus Christ tell Peter? Follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. What does that even mean? There was no definition that even came with that explanation. He followed him. And when he stood the test of time, he received the Holy Spirit and they became apostles that walked in power. That's right. Remember Stephen and Philip, the evangelists, they were serving tables at first. Read Acts 6, Acts 7, they were serving tables. And then you see that the Lord used Philip and he used Stephen, but they never had titles. You heard later on, Philip was even being used in Samaria, Acts chapter eight, casting out devils and doing miracles. It was never told to him you never heard him being considered an evangelist until Paul went and stayed with him and his four daughters that did prophesy. That was 20 years later from, from um, uh, the, uh, Acts 8. 
where Paul went and stayed with Philip, the evangelist, the same Philip that was one of the deacons, so to speak, and the same Philip that was in Samaria at chapter 8. No one ever knew their destiny. So when people are telling you these things that's going to come, this stuff is coming from Satan. Some of these things will happen because Satan has power. He knows things that you struggle with. That sometimes it's the spirits in you and you're praying. They're hearing your prayers and they're communicating to these false preachers and these false prophets and these false teachers. And the spirits in them are communicating with the spirits in you. They know exactly what you ask for. Want that job at Burger King. They'll come and tell you that job and praying for a Burger King. God going to give it to you. Satan doesn't care about using God or Jesus name. He just wants you to live in sin and disobedience. That's all he cares about. He never, ever tried to make you worship him. It's not in your nature to. No one in this world ever relates to evil. They always justify evil behavior. Even a murderer that's on trial, he'll justify why he murdered someone. You never see people just walking around. I'm just evil. I love Satan. It's a small percentage of this population of this earth that, that worships the devil. Small percentage. Everyone believes in some type of God. Come on, brothers and sisters. It's not in you to be evil. You were created from righteousness. Remember, let's create man in our image after our likeness. You see? That is what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters. So don't listen to these people that's telling you that 2019 is going to be a year of increase and breakthrough. Even Jesus Christ himself said he don't know the day or the hour. Only God knows when he's coming back. So the Lord is telling you, how can man over trump God's word? God tell you that you're going to go through much tribulations and enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14. The Bible says in this world you have many tribulations. How can a preacher tell you that 2019 is going to be a year of blessing? You're going to 2019 gullible. Then every little attack that come, you're looking at God in a bad light because you trusted in this man's word. You trusted in this man's word. You're saying, oh, this is going to be a blessing. 2019 is going to be my year of increase. How do you know that? How do you know that? No one knows. The Bible tells me to worry about tomorrow. How can a person tell you about tomorrow? Well, we're not supposed to worry about it. How can someone tell you about it? Come on, that's going to naturally make you worry and walk in anxiety. Come on, brothers and sisters. You don't know God's word. You're sitting here listening to what people are telling you. Yeah, you know, God's going to bless you with this and God's going to bless you with that. You don't know God's word. That's why you fall into, into temptation. That's why those things happen to you, because you allow people to tell you all these things, and they lead you astray. They deceive you. But that's what I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters. Think about it. How can a man tell you what's going to happen to you in your life? How? How? When the Lord said that you're going to go through much things in this world, that's all I'm trying to say. Remember, the lady in Acts 6 and 16 was able to predict the future. Everyone that comes and tells something that you want to hear, to be honest, most of the stuff that you hear is what, most stuff that's being told to you through these, through these false prophets is what your flesh wants to hear. God going to bless you. I don't know what it is. How, how, don't, how you don't know what it is? You're telling me what God is, you're saying what thus says the Lord, but you can't tell me what it is. So, I, I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. You read in Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, when they came and spoke to people, they knew exactly what they were speaking on. God would never send them where someone say, what are you talking about, Isaiah? I'm not going through that. They were able to speak the deep things that was in people's heart. You see? So that's what I'm just trying to show you. You know, so th this is why, you know, you see today many are deceived. What goes on? Will they deceive what's going on today in the church? If you really want to serve God, you have to know his word so you won't be deceived. And you have to make sure that you're, you're committed to the cross because there's much that's going to be that's required of you. Don't believe in religion. That's why you never see anyone ever really argue against what I'm saying up here because I only give you Bible. I only give you Bible. Come on. You want to see what true men of God spoke? 2 Kings 6 and 12 says this. And one of his servants said, none, my Lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that speaketh in the bedchambers. 
This was how men of God, true prophets, those things were revealed from you. Because how is that possible? Because God sees all and he air all. Nothing is hidden under the sun. Everything is made known to Jesus. So why was they saying this in 2 Kings 6 and 12? Man, Elijah tell you what goes on in your bedchambers. They hated Elijah because he'll come and speak the deep things. You were masturbating. You was fornicating. You, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that. You've been watching pornography. You've been this, you've been that. Deep things. That's true prophecies. You guys take it as judgment because you don't know God's word. Come on now. Look at 2 Kings 6 and 12. Spend time reading your word. You see? You see? Look at this. Ezekiel 8 and 12 says, Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in dark, even man in the chambers of his imaginary? For they, for they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Come on, he's letting you know I see all. And if, he, if you're a true man of God, he'll reveal these things to you. Where you see, you can't hide anything. You see? So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. This is true prophets, not the ones you see today that's only tickling you, that's telling you what you want, that's making you feel that you're hearing this and you're, making you feel good for the moment. Then you go back home and you're hearing racing thoughts. You're having anxiety attacks. You're hearing voices. You know, you're experiencing this and that. You see what I'm trying to say? This is true prophets. That's what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters. Even with Samuel, even with Samuel, he spoke the same things. Look what he said. Look at 1 Samuel 9 and 19. These are true prophets of God. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place. For ye shall eat with me today and tomorrow. I will let thee go and will tell thee all that is in thy heart. Come on, brothers and sisters. These are true prophets of God. They spoke what you didn't want to be revealed. When you came to a true prophet of God, people ran from them if they were hiding in sin and they were walking in pride because it was going to be revealed what you were doing. Today, people come and tell you nothing that corrects sin, only what pleases the flesh. Prophets of God in the Bible, they spoke the truth that made you repent and turn to God. You've never seen the, the prophets of old ever just tell you what you wanted to hear. They only spoke what God wanted them to say. That's why the Bible said, Peter, that no prophecy came of, it, of private interpretation. It said the holy men spoke as they was moved by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Today, people would make Facebook teachings every day, every day, every day, every day. God is not telling them to do that. And then you don't see no power on their pages. Just a whole bunch of talk. You wonder why the world's not coming to, to Jesus. They don't see the power that was promised to, to the believers. All they see is talk, condemning, judgment, using props. Someone sent me today on Facebook a, a pastor falling on stage. And they said he fell because he was using an illustration of the scriptures. Where's the power? The Holy Spirit is a teacher. The Bible said the Lord spoke with much authority like the scribes. You don't have to use props and illustrations to explain God's word. You're trying to use the human mind to make people understand it with their carnally mind. You see? This is what I'm just trying to show you. This is what I'm trying to show you. This is what I'm showing you. Many people don't understand that they have spirits inside of them. They don't understand that. They look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and they see how gifts were given to the church. Who were the gifts given to? Unbelievers don't need healings. They don't believe. Unbelievers don't need miracles. They don't believe. Unbelievers don't need deliverances. They don't believe. Who was Paul giving those handkerchiefs to when he rubbed on his body? Who was Peter's shadow healing in Acts 5? Believers, this is why many of you are saying that God is doing this and God is doing that and this and that. Like many, many people have said that I talked to one woman before 
And she was telling me that so many Christians she know was having dreams about Obama, that he was the Antichrist, right? Whoa. Now, brothers and sisters, now, one thing I can tell you is that I work hard to do what the word says and to live my life according to scripture, right? I pray. I live in the presence of God. He directs me. He works through me, casting out demons, healing the sick, doing miracles, signs and wonders. Just name it all for his glory. Now, you say that God gave you a dream about those who are in a position of power and authority. Romans 13 verse 1 says, let every soul be subjected to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that are, are to be are ordained by God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist it shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Well, then that will they will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God to revenge and to execute wrath upon that does evil. That's why we have the government. Whether ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sakes. For this cause, pay tribute also, for they are God's ministers. What did Jesus Christ do when he, when he gave, uh, when they asked him, do he pay taxes to Caesar? What did he say? Give to Caesar what Caesar's and give to God prayers. Your heart, devotion, faith to God. But you have to pay those taxes. Jesus did it. Listen what it says. For this cause, pay tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues. Come on, brothers and sisters. Their needs. Why do you think you pay taxes? Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Titus 3 and 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and to, pow and, and to powers and to obey magistrates, to be ready to be ready to every good work. Second Peter chapter two, verse 13. Submit yourself to every ordinance of men for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the president that do well. You see, brothers and sisters, but the people say that they had dreams about Obama. He was the chief commander of our country basically the king we don't have kings today in our country they got queens in, in you know different countries in africa but we don't have that so we know a president is is, is considered a king and he's a, he's the highest order the king has the highest order so how can you say that god gave you a dream about a man that's placed in the office by him he even told Pilate. Pilate said don't you know i have the power to release you he said you only have that power because my father gave it to you Come on, brothers and sisters, you never heard Jesus Christ ever speak evil of anyone. Let's look at something else. Let's look at what Paul did. Let's look at what Paul did when he was on trial. Let's go to Acts 26. Let's look at when Paul was on trial. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee. Touching all things, wherefore I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee, hear me patiently. Come on, brothers and sisters. When did you ever see Paul get up there and be rude? You see? This is what I'm showing. Well, you see, this is in all in the Bible. So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. You've never seen the Lord, Paul, any of the men of God speak evil against anyone. But you'll say that God gave you a dream about Donald Trump or about Obama. God placed them in that position of power. Come on, brothers and sisters. It's been happening since the beginning of time. You remember when God used Nebuchadnezzar? You remember when God used the prince of Persia? Come on now. <laughs> you remember when God used the pharaoh of Egypt? You remember when God hardened the pharaoh of Egypt's heart? To display his power, you remember when God touched the, the, the king of, uh, uh, of, of, of Egypt's heart to bless Joseph and to make him a governor? Come on now. Acts 23 in verse 2. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. 
For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smite contrary to the law. And they that stood by said, Revelest thou God, high priest? Then said Paul, I did not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Come on, brothers and sisters. Even Paul corrected himself, not knowing that he was the high priest. So even though he was on trial for his life, and he was smacked in his mouth, even when they called him names and did bad things to him, he still stood on the word. So you're saying that this is what Jesus is telling you, to speak evil of Obama and all these people. That's a demon in you telling you that stuff. That's not coming from God because that's not, that's not consistent to God's word. That's all I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters. Jesus never went around exposing people. He spoke the word. People had understanding, and they said, oh, I was with these people. They were doing these things that Jesus told us not to do. Okay, I know the truth now. He didn't walk around sitting there talking about all the false prophets and false men of God. I'm just being honest, brothers and sisters. That's not of God. You never see Jesus go around exposing people. You don't think that it was false priests, false preachers, teachers, everyone out there. He didn't have time for that. He had to preach the gospel and bring the world to him. So let's get into the word, brothers. I just wanted to share that real quick. Just be careful. Many Christians and pastors, preachers, and false prophets tell you that 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20 is your year of blessing, breakthrough, and favor from God. They speak the same things every year. No man knows your life, only God. Many say my new year revolution is this and that, but these things are not of God. A resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. How can you make a resolution when your steps are supposed to be ordered by the Lord? Right? John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So how can a man tell you? That 2019 is going to be nothing but blessings, favor, breakthrough, the, the, you're going to be used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When our Lord just said that in this world, you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So how can a man tell you that 2019 is going to be a year of increase and blessing when the Lord has already told you for the rest of your life there's going to be tribulation? Even Paul said in Acts 14, we must go through much tribulations to enter the kingdom of God, right? So how can a man tell you? Let's see what Paul said in Acts 14. Let me get to it. Acts 14. Acts 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Remember, exhorting means to pressure and to, you know, in, in, encourage them. And that we must do much tribulations, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, brothers and sisters, Paul never walked with Jesus. Paul ne never was one of the 12 chosen disciples, but he was uh, an apostle later on. On the road to Macus, he had the vision and he seen the Lord, heard the voice. Who was that, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you persecute. It's hard to kick against the pricks. What shall I do, Lord? Go into the makers. It should be told to you what to do. Right? Now, brothers and sisters, now, did Paul not say the same thing that Jesus Christ said? Now, what is it about the believers that speaks the same? Now, when we read the, when we read the New Testament and we look at the saints of old, they always spoke identically to what Jesus Christ spoke. Now, let's go back to what the Lord said. This is our Lord's word, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, this is before Paul was even called to be an apostle. This is when Paul was still a Pharisee. So Paul never even heard this. Remember, he never even heard this teaching. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Let's go to what Paul said, Acts 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must do much tribulations, enter into the kingdom of God. 
Wow, Paul. Now, Paul, why did you speak the same thing as Jesus? Hmm. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. Let's see what the Lord has for us. You see why Paul spoke the same thing Jesus Christ spoke? Because he truly, genuinely had the Holy Ghost. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost testifies of all the things that Jesus Christ said. And I'm going to show you something else that's going to back up these verses. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says this. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Now, they have the same spirit of faith, and what's ever written, they believe, and they have spoken. Now, where does all this come from? Let's go to John. Let's go to John 14. Let's look at John 14. Let's scroll all the way down. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and do what, brothers and sisters? And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You see why it's spoke the same thing? Because he truly had the Holy Ghost. Why is everyone teaching different things today? They don't have the spirit. These are demons. Who do who people think I'm praying for all the time? You guys are watching my page. You see the videos, whether you like them or not, you're watching them. You see people getting delivered from demons over and over. Everyone needs deliverance. You came from darkness. You never got delivered by a true apostle. You never got delivered by a true elder. You've never been set free. That's why you find yourself falling in the same temptations. Lust, pornography, masturbation. Many Christian men, many, listen, sisters, hear me out. Many Christian men battle with masturbation. Battle, but you, you, you look at them as being your husbands, but they can't control themselves from masturbating. They have a spirit of lust inside of them. That's why they watch much pornography. They masturbate. They look at women. They need deliverance. You cannot get married before you receive deliverance. Them spirits will destroy your marriage. You'll find yourself going to divorce. That's what it always leads to. Demons are behind that. The Bible says he doesn't want anyone to divorce. Then why are you giving in? Oh, I just can't deal with that person. But you could deal with them when you first met them. Once you got tired of the fornication and the, I mean, the sex and all that stuff, you got rid of them. I mean, you got tired. You see? Brothers and sisters, we have to learn the word. Many of you don't spend enough time with me to learn the word because you have pride. You think that no one can tell you anything, but you're struggling in sin. And the Bible tells you in John 3, you're not supposed to continue in sin. It said, if you sin, you have not known him. Neither are you of him. So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. When you guys going to believe, you're watching all the deliverances that I'm posting, and you still don't believe. You still think I'm just talking. And people are coming constantly, constantly getting delivered. Spirits coming out of them. And these are Christians. One guy asked me, are these Christians? Brother, where did it say that Christians couldn't have spirits inside of them? Yes, if you have the Holy Spirit, of course you can't have a spirit in you. But 99% don't have the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. You guys don't believe me yet? How long have you been seeing me pray for people these last couple of years? If the, do you see anyone coming to pray for me? I'm just being honest, brothers and sisters. You are taught by religion, and you don't know the word. Spend time with me. Let's do a Bible study. Let me show you what the words say. But some pride won't even let you do that because you feel you can't be taught. You feel you can't be taught, especially by a funny-looking man, look, funny man like me. Right? So remember in Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and the light of in his way. Many Christians, brothers and sisters, misinterpret and misquote this verse where it says, write the vision down and make it plain. Brothers and sisters, that is a contradiction to God's word. You're telling me that, okay, where's it? Victoria, Elizabeth. Sister, I just, I, I want to go to Africa. I want to do some missionary journey. Then when I get back from there, I want to open up a, 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 a bake sale. Then after I'm get done with that, sis, I want to, you know, I'm thinking about starting my own ministry. I'm going to go and try to get a loan from my bank. See so if I can get about $70,000, get a little small little business loan. I'm going to write, write it down, brother, and make it plain. Sisters, brothers, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord delighteth. Many of you missed the last part of that. The light of means to have joy, to have peace, to have understanding. That's not the author of confusion. So whatever he guides, 
he will provide. If they, if they have the Holy Spirit, Sister Victoria, they will walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's take a look at that. Let me ask you a question real quick. I, I know it's off topic, but, is, but just be patient with us. Let's, let's answer her question. Let me show you, sis, to know who has the Holy Spirit. Right here. Mark 16 and 16. I'll give everybody a chance to get there. Let's look at Mark 16 and 16. Mark 16 and 16. I'll give everybody a chance to get there. Mark 16 and 16. And he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and they shall drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he would receive up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Right? Let's go to John 14 and 12. John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than he shall he do, because I go unto the Father. That's right. Now, let's look at those who really had the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Acts 5. Acts 5. Let's look at verse 12. And by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, which mean worked amongst the people. And the rest does not join themselves to them, but the people magnify them. And the believers were more added to the Lord, multiples, both men and women. And so much they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least by the shadow of Peter passing by might, might overshadow some of them. So you see, then there came also out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing six folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. These are those who truly got the Holy Spirit since the victory. Now let's go to Matthew 24 to show you what Peter did and the apostles was identical to what Jesus Christ did. Matthew 24 to show you that what Peter did and the apostles did, what the Lord did through them was identical to what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. That's how you knew he had the spirit. They had the spirit. Look at Acts 24. I'm sorry, Matthew. I'm sorry, Matthew 4, Matthew 4. Sorry, but it's sorry, it's Matthew 4. Matthew 4, verse 23. And Jesus, went, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching their synagogues and preaching the gospel and healing all men, things, all men diseases amongst the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments in which those were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. These men that are claiming, these men are claiming to be believers are supposed to be able to do the same thing. You're not supposed to be taking medicine, going to the hospital, going to doctors. Your healer is Jesus. Listen, I back up everything I say. Matthew 10 and verse one. And when he called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits and to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Why people, their wives get sick, they go to the hospital. Husbands get sick, they give them medicine and pills. Where's the spirit? Where's the spirit? How are you not able to heal someone if you have the spirit of God? You're supposed to be able to pray for the sick, raise the dead. You're supposed to be able to cast out devils. But says, listen to this. You see many miracle crusades, many prophetic gatherings in our country, but you never see deliverances. Victoria, think about it, sister. Think about it, because you have an open heart. Think about it, sister Victoria, Elizabeth. Think about this. In this country, you see many miracle crusades, cancer crusades. You can't see cancer inside of someone. You know, it's, it's spiritual. So anyone can make a crusade. You know, you're, you're believing, right? You see many prophetic gatherings. 
but you never see deliverances. They will mention deliverances, but you never see demons manifesting the way they manifested in the Bible. Let me show you God's word. Right? When people got prayed for in the Bible, demons spoke, they screamed, they manifested, they lashed out. You see, many people today will pray for people and they'll just push them down and say, oh, you're delivered, you're healed. And you go back and do the same thing. In the Bible, when people got prayed for, demons manifested. They manifested, right? Matthew 12, 22 and 32. Matthew 12, 22 and 32. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed them, and so much that the blind and the dumb spoke. And all that, all people were amazed and said unto this, 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 is, this is not the son of David. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Bazel, the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every king divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is dividing against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? Verse 27. If I be Bezebel, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they should be your judge. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. You see? So you can't cast out devils unless you have the Holy Spirit. That's why you don't never see deliverances, brothers and sisters. That's why y'all look at my page and think it's strange. Because you have grew up in religion the same way I did, believing in what man taught you, but not what the word says. You can't cast out spirits unless you have the spirit. That's one way you'll know. And many of you will say, well, the Bible says you can't say Jesus Christ is Lord unless by the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, that's not what that verse means. It means that a person had the Holy Spirit and not supposed to be saying the Lord. Because if you don't have the Spirit, you're not none of His. So the point I'm trying to make to you is this. If you go down the corner right now and speak to a drug addict, say, I got $20 for you. Say Jesus Christ is Lord. You think their mouth is going to get stuck? They're going to tell you Jesus Christ is Lord. You have many false prophets saying Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, brothers and sisters. You're not supposed to say it unless under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible is telling you. Anybody can say it today. You done seen people say it that came out later and confessed to be homosexual as preachers and pastors. Come on, brothers and sisters. You know anyone can say it. it is, you're not supposed to unless you're, you feel that. That's what the verse is telling you. You see? Now look, Mark 5, verse 1. And there came... Mark 5, verse 1, and there came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the uh, Gardenians. And when he, when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met, out of, um, there met out of the tombs a man with the unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could buy him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adore thee by God that thou torment me not. That's the demon speaking right there, brothers and sisters. For he said unto him, Come out, come out the, come out the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him, the demon, much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was, there, now, now, now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of um, uh, swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Come on, brothers and sisters. Them demons were talking. That's right. They're entities. The Bible said that Satan comes as an angel of light. He spoke to Eve. What makes you think demons can't speak through you during the manifestation? Come on, brothers and sisters. This is what I'm trying to show you. They were having a conversation. Don't torment us. Who are you? 
we're legions, for we are many. Can you cast it out into the, don't cast out out the country. Cast it out into the, into the swine. Go. Come on, brothers. They had a conversation with the Lord. But then you see deliverances on my page, you're confused. Why are these, these people, what are these people talking about? Those are demons speaking to those people. There are many people that have demons in them. This is why you're constantly being tormented with sicknesses. You're constantly being tormented in your dreams, sex in your dreams, nightmares. You're being held down when you wake up. Uncontrolled pain, sick body, just name it. Children can't learn their work at school. Everything. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I can keep going on. Acts 16 and 16. And it came to pass as we went to the prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Susan. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That's right. So you see, brothers and sisters, these demons knew who were men of God. It's real, brothers and sisters. This is why many are finding themselves, keep finding the same setbacks. Because you have spirits in you. Even I had to get delivered. You're not, you're not going to just come to God and not go to deliverance. You know you battle with anger. You're just in denial. You know, come and get prayed for. Many have came to me thinking that nothing was in them. But remember, you can only cast out demons by what? The Spirit of God. Come on, Sister Victoria. You can only cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Satan cannot cast out himself. He doesn't have the power to override himself, to overpower himself. Only God's power can break up in a strong man house and bind him up and spoil his goods. It takes a stronger man to be able to suppress a weaker man. You understand? So Satan can't cast out himself. So if I cast out spirits, brothers and sisters, I cast them out because the Holy Spirit is in me. One thing that Satan can't fake, it said that just being delivered, Sister Victoria, you just got to be delivered. That's all. Remember what he said, I have to give you the spirit of fear. So God let you know that is a spirit. See, he letting you know it's a spirit. I have to give you the spirit of fear. So you have to be delivered. Victoria, many brothers and sisters that, that I have prayed for, they all battle with, with fear. Some fear of bugs, some fear of birds, some fear of, you know, just, I mean, just a, like different phobias or whatever, just anything. And when I pray for them, the spirit of fear comes out. I make them be fearful. I make them afraid. I make them not trust your God. I make them not believe in the word. I make them think that there's a bug going to be crawling on them. I make them think when they're home by themselves, they're going to see something. Fear. You just got to be delivered. Your heart is already open. Your heart is already open. So you'll be free. God give permission. You get prayed for it. You're free. And you're going and, 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 and not have to worry about those things if you continue in faith. That's why the Lord said when one spirit leaves, it goes off. Everyone comes to God. People, I have people tell me, like, people get discouraged. Listen, brothers and sisters, people will, I, I'm going to inbox you, Sister Victoria, once, we, once I hang up this message. I'll inbox you. But people will call me and tell me all the stuff they face demonically. Brother Ronald, man, I, I had sex in my dreams. Brother Ronald, uh, I, I, I'm seeing spirits. Brother Ronald, I'm hearing voices. I, I'm like, brother, sister, you need deliverance. Brother Ronald, but I, I don't believe I got no spirit in me. Just come and see then. I show them the word. I can only cast out spirits by the spirit of God. I don't have a demonic spirit in me. You don't see the demons casting out demons. Why would they do that? They're losing then. To free you, they lose. They want to keep you bound. So I can only cast spirit out by the spirit. Why are you afraid to come get prayed for? You know what you're going through. You know you're having attacks. You're not supposed to. Listen, 1 John 5 and 18. Thank you, Lord. 1 John 5 and 18. Look at this. 1 John 5 and 18. We know that whosoever, we know that whosoever, but see, this is the problem, brother uh, Yashu Watchman. There are no true elders. Where are the elders? Because many of you are battling and there's no one to pray for you to deliver you. They all went to the apostles who were the elders. To receive deliverances. You guys are running to doctors for, for healing and looking for their report and you say you got faith because you can copy and paste Bible verses. Many people on Facebook claim to be men of God. Where is the power of God being manifested in their lives? 
Jesus walked with power. He talked with power. He looked when he when Jesus looks, it's power. When he talks, it's power. When he moves, it's power. Everything about God is power. There are no true elders. Listen, when has Christianity ever been accepted to this world? You're telling me in every state that we're in right now, you got church on every corner, and they're being allowed to worship like that freely. They wasn't allowed in the book of Acts because they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They were walking around miracles. I mean, the world was coming to Jesus. Today, people are leaving Christianity and becoming Hebrew Israelites. Come on, brothers and sisters. People are leaving Christianity and going to Islam, different things like that. They're not even, they're not even seeing the things of God because they walked in power. They walked in power in the Bible. People are reading the Bible and they're not seeing the words being matched in our generation. So his name is not Jesus, it's Yahshua. That's why all you guys got that name up there. Cast a demon out in that name. Nothing's gonna happen. You wanna believe if his, if, if his name is Jesus? Come, let me pray for you. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Come get prayed for, and I'll show you which name is a true name. When you speak that name under the influence of the Holy Spirit with power, that name shakes the devil's kingdom. Because people have not seen that name being used under the influence of the Holy Spirit as it was in the book of Acts, then people, Satan is able to persuade our generation that that's not his name. I don't care his name being mentioned in Hebrew. God bless the name, step the name in English. That's why you see through that name on my page, on my page demons are being casted out. People are being healed in that name, Jesus. You don't see no one on YouTube that name being used. There's no power. God will never let it be power because that's how you, your mind works systematically to think, well, that's his name in Hebrew so that I, I can use that name. God never said read, read the Bible in Hebrew. He never said read the Bible in Greek or Latin. He blessed the Bible in English. I'm giving you wisdom. It, it's, it's only for you to want to receive. We know that whosoever is born of God, sin if not, he that's begotten of God keep himself and the wicked one touches him not. Why are you being touched? Why are you being touched? Listen now. Listen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Man, y'all, this is amazing. I'm telling you, the word of God is amazing when you have faith. Remember, the Bible said that Peter was, was speaking with wisdom that could not be contended. That's why no one can shut me down from the word. Because I don't speak from my own, but from the Holy Spirit. And you will never be out of outmatch God. Not through his word, because his word is the truth. It's not a lie. So you'll never be out of outmatch the truth of God's word. You can come with all these theories and these doctrines and heresies, but you will still be overpowered by the power of God. You will never be able to make God seem like a lie. That's right. Not when someone is truly filled with the spirit, speak under the influence of the Holy Ghost. You'll never be able to. You'll never be able to. You'll be suplexed. By the power of God. I'm telling you, you can't play with Jesus. God is real. Now listen, I got something that's gonna bless y'all. Let's look at Acts. Let's look at Acts. Go to Acts 9, brothers and sisters. Now, where's my brother at that's that wrote this? I want to I want to show him something. Is this how I know I'm telling you what's true. We have to keep the God's divine orders, brothers and sisters in Christ. Saints, we got to keep God's divine order. Okay? Now, before I go to, I'm going to give you guys time to get the Acts. I'm sorry, verse 9. We'll start around 36. Let's look at this. Oh, this is going to bless y'all. I pray you guys sit here and watch this video. I pray you guys watch this. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over you, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If he have committed any sins, then it shall be forgiven of him. You see? I don't struggle with sin, brother. I'm just being honest. I don't struggle with sin because I know better. The Spirit is in me. Sin will not rule and dominate my body when I'm filled with the spirit. That doesn't make any sense. I don't, I don't, I don't struggle with, I'm just being honest. I don't struggle with sin because I know that sin is wrong. The Bible said to do it, to him that knows to do it good and do it not to him is a sin. Listen, you said we all struggle. You struggle. I, I'm not, I don't struggle, brother. Let me show you what the Bible says after I, after I do this. I'm going to show you what the words say. 
Is any sick among you? The Holy Spirit is more powerful than the power of Satan. The Bible said where sin abounded, grace did more abound. So I'm not sitting here playing. The elder is someone is with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right, brother. The elder is someone that was that had a power. So, so, but before, before, before we go there, I'm about to give you all the answers. Just follow me real quick. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you. Not the preacher, not the pastor, not fellow Christians, the elders, because everyone is not a Christian. That's why the Bible says in Corinth, if anyone claims to be a brother and is a fornicator, an extortioner, a luster, a reller, a drunkard, it says such and one not to even eat with, right? So everyone's not a brother just because they claim to be a Christian. Those who obey our master are truly genuinely children of God. That's why the Bible says, you love me, obey my commandments. Then I will pray and the father will send a comforter. There's stipulations there. So you see, look, if is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, not the pastor, not the preacher, not fellow Christians. Yes, pray for one another. God bless Victoria. God bless our Rachel. God bless Brother Keith. Bless Courtney. Keep them, you know, let your will be done in their life. But when it comes to lay hands on the sick and to cast out devils, that's dangerous if you're not called. Read about the seven sons of Sceva, right? Paul I know. Jesus I know. No, I don't curse, brother. You need deliverance. You're not listening to me. Listen. Brother, you're confessing you as a Christian. You're not listening to me, brother. I just said that. When people are finding themselves continuously in sin, you need deliverance, brother. Yahshua's watchmen. You have a that's a spirit in you of anger. I told you that before. I told you that a while ago. You didn't receive it. No, I don't get angry and curse, brother. What am I going to get angry at when I'm filled with the fruits of righteousness? The fruits of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, um, 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 uh, uh, goodness, faith. I don't know. I don't have those things. I'm not going to lie to you. How can I be sitting here praying for people that have these the issues and I'm being and, 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 and I, I'm suffering with those same problems? I'll be a hypocrite, brother. The Bible said in James five that if we choose to be uh, teachers, you know, we'll face great, great condemnation because we know better. So how am I going to preach to you about love? But I don't walk in love. How am I going to tell you not to be angry and curse if I curse? That's a hypocrite. How can you preach the Bible? How can you tell someone not to be angry when you suffer with anger? You need deliverance. No, I don't get angry. I speak with boldness. I speak with love and compassion. But I don't get angry. But listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to get to that. I'm, I'm showing you all this. No, I, I didn't. Listen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. brother. I don't willfully sin, brother. Now, listen. See, this, this, is, this always happens. You see what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters? This, this always happens. Listen. Now, you gave me that verse. Now, I told you, you you're not, you're not going to be able to contend against the Spirit. You said the Holy Spirit told you to give you that. The Holy Spirit didn't give you that, brother. Pride gave you that. Hebrews 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice. See, the Holy Spirit didn't give you that, brother. That's not come from the spirit. See, that's, that's, that's the spirit of deception. Now let's go to 1 John 3, brother. See, this is what I'm trying to show you. You don't even know what that verse means, brother. It's telling you, remember the audience that, John, um, that, that, that Paul was talking to. He was talking to the Jews that were saying, he was talking to the Jews that were saying that they didn't need to repent. So he's telling you that everyone has sinned. All have sinned. So he was writing to the, 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 the believers, letting them know that they was not, uh, uh, exempt from repentance. Now listen, you're, you're giving me what you feel. I'm giving you Bible, brother. See the difference? You said the Holy Spirit told you to give me that, but you're not giving me Bible to back up those things. Th thank you, brother Michael. See, believers will help you. Listen to what I'm saying in 1 John 3. I don't sin willfully, brother. I don't. I don't sin. If I sin, it's, it's not willfully. I'm not going to say I, I sin. I'm not a sinner, brother. 
I'm a sinner saved by grace. I don't keep the title as a sinner. The Bible said that God doesn't hear the prayer of sinners. So if you're claiming to be a sinner, then you're not a Christian. God's not hearing your prayers. We don't claim to be sinners, brother. We don't claim that. Let me show you what the Bible says in 1 John 3 and 6. Whoso, I'm sorry, verse 5. 1, 1 John 3 and 5. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. This is 1 John 3, 5, and let's go to verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever has sinned, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Right? Now you're claiming that you're sinned, so you don't know God. Because you're this is what you're this is what you're claiming. I'm showing what the Bible says. We are not supposed to sin, brother. Zero. Why did he die for us to, to, to remain in sin? How's the spirit in you when sin is overpowering you? So you're telling me that darkness can overpower the light? Come on, brother. The Holy Spirit is power to make us walk in the power of God and walk out the will of God for our life. Remember, we was created in God's image after his likeness. The likeness was gone when we committed sin. We get it back through the Holy Spirit, the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of the spirit. So look what it says, verse six, before, before you write anything back, listen, brother, humble yourself and listen, be slow to speak and quick to listen, slow to wrath. Before you write back, brother, listen to the word. This is your father's word. If you believe that's your father, listen to his words, not brother Ronald. First John three, five. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Take away our sins. If you take something away, what, what happens, brother? It's no longer there. Hear me out now. Whosoever abideth in sin, whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Brother, this, listen, let me, I'll read it slower. Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Look, look, verse 7. He, I'm not claiming to be righteous. See, this, look, see, brother, this is, what I'm, see, this is what I'm trying to show you. See, that's, that's, the, that's the religion that's in you, brother. That's the religion that's in you. Because you're saying all this stuff that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm reading you, brother. You won't even listen. You, you, it says not to sin, and you're still talking about not being righteous. This is, this is, uh, this is what I'm showing you. This is what I'm showing you. You won't even listen. How do you feel about 1 John 3 and 5, 6, and 7? It's like you won't hear it. I asked him, please, to listen. He couldn't even listen. You know that's the spirit inside of you, brother. You're fighting against the truth of God's word. Who's saying I never sinned? You know I sinned if, if I had to come to Christ. I was a sinner, but I'm saved. Now I'm a saint. I'm not categorized with the rest of the world. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are God. I'm not the same person I used to be. I'm saved, you understand, <laughs> from sin. So no, I don't willfully sin. If you do, you need deliverance. See, that's, that's, that's the religion. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna entertain that, brother, because he won't even listen. This is what I'm showing you. Listen, 1 John 3. Please just listen. I'm, a, I'm just going to ask one more time. And I'm going to move on. He that committed sin, 1 John 3 and 8. And I can go to Romans 6 as well. And I can go to Hebrews as well. I can go to Peter as well. And I can go to Paul epistles about sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, whosoever is born, verse 9, 1 John 3. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Verse 10. And this children of God are manifest in children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, listen, you said that there's no one righteous, right? I just want to show you something real quick. Now, this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. You see, this is, what, this is the problem. We don't know God's word. 
You see? So this is what I'm showing you. First Timothy 6 and 11. But thou, O man of God, flee things and follow the righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience. You see? The Bible tells us to be perfect as God is perfect. Why do we make it seem? Why do we make it seem as it's so hard to not commit sin? Because we find pleasure in it. And it's demons there. That's right, Brother Michael. You have to faithfully remain in the faith until the end. That's why Paul said, I kept the faith. I fought the fight. I stayed the course. This is what I'm showing you, right? That's right. It's not once saved, always saved. Because the Bible says, if any man draws back, my soul has no, no like to be in him. So how can we say that, you know, well, I'm not perfect. He tells you to be perfect. You have a perfect God. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That's right. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I can't, I can't, I can't. Brother, I'm just being honest with you. Listen, I read to you the verses, brother. You never commented on those. You're commenting on what you feel. You lean to your own understandings. You never commented on 1 John 3. You're commenting, everyone is giving you these verses. We're not supposed to sin, brother. It's like, you're fight, it's like you're fighting against yourself because you know you struggle in those areas and you're not supposed to. You need deliverance, brother. What do you think I'm up here preaching about? Do you watch my deliverances? <laughs> do you not hear the people, demons, confessing that they're angry, they curse, they drink, they fornicate, they do all this stuff as Christians? It's the spirits, brother. Who do you think the demons were, who do you think was, why do you think the disciples are casting demons out of people? Why do you think it's casting demons out of people? I'm t brother, listen, I don't willfully sin. I don't willfully sin, brother. I'm just being, I, I can't, I can't, I mean, re it's, I, I don't know. I just love people so much. I know I'll say I'm not going to say it again, but I just love people so much. And I, I, he's just lost. And I just want to help him to see the truth. Because if you read 1 John 3, it tells you that we're not supposed to sin. You know, so I don't know how you can still be a Christian and live in sin. What did Christ come and die for? That doesn't make any sense. Look what it says here. Look what it says here. You see? So this is what, this is what happens in, today in, in our society. We, many people will think that they can just keep living the same way. Look at 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, or an adulterer, or a reller, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one not to eat. Come on now. So this is people that are claiming to be believers, and that's not. No, listen, brother, listen, listen to me. You're not listening to the message. It's a war within your members. I understand you don't want to sin willfully. That's why I'm telling you, you need to be delivered. That's a spirit in you, brother. How else can your heart be so for God and you can't obey his word? What is causing that? Remember, when, when Judas allowed sin into his heart, what did he do? Sin against God. What happened when, 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 when Peter was rebuking Jesus? What did, what did, what did Jesus tell him? If, if, so, so, brother, you don't, let me ask you this question. Do you believe you, you need deliverance? Do you believe that there's a spirit inside of you? However you reply is how I'm going to reply. Do you believe that you need deliverance? That's all I'm just trying to say. I'm not talking about sinning and falling short and all that stuff. I read you the word. I can't, I can't go over the word. The word is the word. Do you believe you have a spirit inside of you? That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. However you respond is how I'm going to respond. But I'm going to respond in love and with the word. All I can tell you is that I just gave you all these Bible verses. This is the problem that we have today, that many Christians are living in sin willfully. And you're not supposed to. That's the problem. So it's not about you just wanting to sin. Okay, you, you don't. So why are you living in sin, brother? It just told you in 1 John 3 that you're not supposed to sin. You're delusional, brother. It just said in 1 John you're not supposed to sin. And if you sin, you don't know him. How you feel about that verse? Listen. Uh, Victoria, 
Keith, Michael, someone, just help me out real quick. Can you post 1 John 3? Because, I mean, I don't think he's going to look at it on his own, but I want to help him, though. I love him. But you don't walk in the power of God, though, brother. Where's the, the deliverances and, and miracles, signs and wonders in your ministry? This is the problem. See, this is why this, this work is, is so hard, because no one wants to receive the truth. Someone, can they please post 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 10? That's all. But I'm, I'm going to keep moving on. Okay. Brother, the Lord never did anything in secret, brother. See, that's the problem. People always tell me, people always tell me that, that they, do, they are used in miracles, signs and wonders, and different things like that. But they never can, can post. They never can, um, they, they always say um, that, that they, they do these things. But the Bible says in Matthew 9 and 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running to, together, he rebuked the foul spirit and said unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirits, I charge thee, come out of him and enter into him no and enter not in, enter no more into him. Brother, that's not God that's not allowing it. When has the Lord ever did, did anything in secret? There's nothing that's hidden under the sun, brother. Nothing hidden under the sun. There's no way that you can say that God, oh, keep, brother, keep that. You said that God didn't allow you to, to post it. How, is our, how would our faith increase, brother? Remember, God uses the technology that we have today. We don't live in the same world, brother. Remember, only, it was only people living in Africa back then, in the Middle East. There was no United States. There was no Australia. There was no Asia. You know, I mean, there was Asia. You didn't hear about Australia and other continents. It was only the main continents that, that was mentioned in the Bible. You didn't have North, um, uh, America and different things like that. You know, Jesus said not to tell the person because he, he was made no, no reputations. That's right. In Philippians, it tells you. But, uh, you, but you're, just, you're just trying to cause contention, brother, and strife. You're, you're, not, you're not coming from a sincere place. Okay, let's go to 1 John 5 and 18. I mean, um, James. I'm sorry. Let's go to James. All you can do is help. I feel like Paul. To the Gentiles, I go. <laughs> you know, you try. This is what I'm trying to tell you, brother. Says, never give up on anyone, even if they are. After the first and second admonition, reject because they're not trying to receive. So after you don't never lo let, lose compassion for people because they're just lost. You know, if he really believed he had the spirit, he will come to get for me to pray for him. He see the proof that I'm a man of God. He, he, he watches the videos. He calls me a brother. You see, this is what I'm showing you. This is what I'm showing you. It's uh, James 5 and 14. But he, he says about boasting. What have I done to boast but only speak the word? You're supposed to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no way around that. There's no way around that. If he believed that he had the Spirit, then he wouldn't be facing the attacks that he's facing on a daily basis. He didn't mention that. That's not normal. He faces much demonic attacks, but Satan's making him believe because he preaches God's word, that's why he get afflicted. But if he reads 1 John 5 and 18, the wicked one touches us not. You've never seen a man of God in the Bible ever talk about demons attacking them. They were attacked by people, but never by demons. Okay, let's go back. Now, I'm not going to answer no more. I know what Satan is trying to do through him. James 5 and 14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anoint him with oil. And the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Now, did you guys ever think about why Tabitha died, right? Remember what James 5 and say. Now, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. Let's see what, what Peter says, chapter 5, verse 1. Now, remember, we just read in James that if any of you are sick, go to the elders of the church. 1 Peter chapter 5 says this, The elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder, and the witness of the servants of Christ. So you see, Peter was an elder. We know he was an apostle. Look what he says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as also a partake of the glory that shall be revealed. Right? So we know that he was an elder. Okay, now let's go back. Let's go back to James. 
Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Now, we know that Peter the apostle was an elder. Now that we got that, let's go to Acts 9. It's going to bless us. Let's see why the other believers couldn't pray for Tabitha. Because they didn't have that level of faith, nor the anointing, nor the spirit. Because they had the spirit, they would have been able to bring her back to life. Right? So let's go to Acts 9. Let's go to Acts 9. Let's look at verse... Let's look at verse um, 36 in Acts 9. And all that dwelt at Lydia and Siren saw him and turned to the Lord. That's after he, he prayed for the, the, um, the man. Verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed her, laid her in the upper chambers. And as for as much as Lydia was nigh unto Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter, look, take note, and the disciples had heard the elder, the apostle, one whose shadow healed people, one who cast out devils, one who healed the sick, was a few miles away. Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring that he would not delay, but to come. Verse 39, Acts 9. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth, which means he put them out the room, and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hands and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows and presented her alive, it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon the Tanner. Now, why wasn't those saints and those disciples able to bring her back to life? They were believers. Did they truly have the spirit? Think about what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Do they truly have the spirit? So you see, so this is, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. So this is what's going on. So you see, this is what I'm showing you. This is the problem that we don't see today. It was the elders that, it was the elders that 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 truly, you know, were the ones that was casting out devils. It's so sad to just see the things how Satan does my brothers in Christ. It's just so sad just to see how Satan does people. This is the problem. This is the problem. It's so sad to see how these demons work in people. This is why the church is the way it is today. This is why you don't see the power of God. Everyone's believing power is posting videos. Everybody's believing power is what they speak out their mouth. But Mark 16 told you what the power looks like. People always speak out of pride and say the reason why they don't do things is because this is why I don't do it. Nothing is hitting. God did everything openly. Jesus did everything openly. He never hid anything that he did from people. How would they have faith increase? The Bible said the lay of the issue of blood, herb Jesus Christ, and she believed. What did she hear of the miracles, the signs, the wonders? It wasn't a secret. Jesus Christ was teaching us to be humble. He never broadcasts. When I make, when I post videos, I never tag anyone in my Facebook live. I never tag people in the, the videos of when people are getting delivered. I simply post them. And if you see them, you see them. I don't tag and say, look what the Lord has done. Look at this. Look at this. Look at me. Oh, I'm so high and mighty. It's Jesus Christ that's casting these demons out of people. <laughs> right? Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Remember how I was speaking. Now, we got that out the way about the elders. This is why many people are not getting delivered because there's not many elders in this country. Okay. Remember people talk about how the Bible say, write the vision down and make it plain.
so this is what happens. Um, look what look what uh, Habaku. Let's go to Habaku, verse um chapter two. Everyone says that write the vision down, make it plain, right? Look what it says in Habaku. It says, "I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me." This is this is a prophet listening for for the voice of God. And what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, comma, and make it plain upon tables, comma, that he may run that readeth. See, they, see, they never give you the rest of the verse. You see how religion does you? Religion does you that way. It tell you to write your vision down, make it plain. But then it doesn't keep telling you what the rest of the verse say. This, this is Satan for you. Listen what it says. And I will answer, and it says, and, and that he may run that read of it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. You see? So they, they, mis, they, mis, they misinterpret this verse. They tell you, well, you see the Bible said, right, the vision not make it plain. That's not what Jesus Christ is saying here. He was talking to the prophet to write down what he's hearing the same way he told John to write down what he sees. <laughs> Come on, brothers and sisters. You see? Okay, let's, let's move on. Proverbs 19 and 21, King James Version. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. The counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Okay, Ecclesiastics 1 and 9. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. That's right. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seem right unto men, but the end thereof, the ways of death. That's right. So you see, many will think that something that they're doing is right. But the end will lead to death because they're living in sin. And many are the plans of a man's heart. But it's the word, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Let's go to Matthew 6 and 24. Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than them? Much better than they. Which of you by taking thought can add one cupid unto his statue. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they tell not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, Matthew 6. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where well shall what we be clothed? Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So how can a man? How can a man, how can a man tell you what's going to happen in tomorrow or the next day? Unless it's a, a prophecy that's given from God, as it was given from the children of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament with the, with the Agabus that came and, and, and prophesied to Apostle Paul, right? So you're not supposed to even worry about tomorrow. So how can a person tell you that 2019, 2020 is a year of increase, breakthrough blessing? That's the devil speaking through them. Okay, James 4 and 13. 
Let's look at James 4 and 13. James chapter 4, verse 13, and we're going to read all the way down to verse 17. Go to now, ye that say to, to oh, I'm sorry. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go in such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what ye shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that know to do good and to do it not to him is a sin. You see? So how can a man tell you 2019? Some people, some people are, are in church right now, bringing the new year in. You're hearing this message opposite of what I'm saying being preached. God's going to, y'all, you can, 2019, new hairstyles, updos, I'm cutting off my dreads, I'm, I'm, I'm going to low fade, I'm, I'm cutting off my hair, I'm starting over a new year, a new me, my resolution is this, my resolution is that. This is what they're saying in church right now. They're sitting there singing and praising and they're going in the same year the same way. Committing sin, living in darkness, being attacked, being afflicted, same diseases, same diseases, same sicknesses. Same spirits. That's not the God that we serve. God that we serve doesn't want you to live that way. Doesn't want you to be in bondage or be in affliction. Not from spirits. Look what it's saying in James 4 and 13. It say that you're not you're supposed to say it's the Lord's will. So I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, I love you all. Keep the faith. Stay encouraged. I pray the will, the will of the Lord will be, the, the God's will be done for your life. I'm not going to sit here and prophet lie to you and tell you. And 2019 is going to be this, this awesome and great year. You might have a flat tire January 1st. But the, but the, but the pastor said, <laughs> come on, brothers and sisters. Those things happen naturally. Okay, let's go to Acts 14 and 22. I read it earlier, so I'll read it again. Acts, 10, Acts, 4, Acts 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Right. So let's look at. And if you look at Romans 12 and 12, Second Corinthians 1 and 16, Thessalonians 1 and 4, Revelations 2 and 1, you know, I mean, this is everything that the word tells us. But because we don't study. The only thing we don't study, we don't know God's word. OK, let's look at. Uh, um, let's look at Romans 12 and 12. Let's see what the Lord has for us there. Romans 12 and 12. Okay. Romans 12 and 12. Rejoice in hope, patience, tribulation, continue instant in prayer. That's right. Rejoicing in hope, patient, and tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. They're not teaching us in, in churches, brothers and sisters. These churches are not churches of God. I'm telling you. That's why you go there all your years, giving all your money paying tithes and offerings that you can buy your way into heaven. They're lying. Yeah, so that goes back, um, Brother Joshua. It goes back. Remember, there were other people in the, in the four Gospels who had the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth was one, and Zechariah was one. John the Baptist was three, and P, um, Jesus was four. So there's people that was in the, in, the, in, the new God, in the New Testament that had, I mean, the four Gospels that had the Holy Spirit. So when John seen the man casting out devils, that's because the man was being used by God. So God was showing you that he can use anyone. He didn't have to be up under Jesus. Neither was um, Zechariah and Elizabeth following Jesus. But they believed in him. They worship him. But you never seen them being numbered with the disciples. Remember, Elizabeth and Zechariah received the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth got the Holy Spirit when John was in her womb. Zechariah received it shortly after. So the man that was casting out devils, remember what I read to you guys. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. I want to um, answer Brother Joshua's um, thing. I know we was, we, was, we, was, we was getting good. But let me, I just want to re read it real quick. Um, 
Let me read uh, this verse back to him. I mean, read this verse back to him. The only way that brother could have been casting out devils is if he was had the spirit of God. Okay, let's read. Um, when the Pharisees heard, this is Matthew 12 and 22. But when the Pharisees heard that they said this fellow does cast out devils, but by Bazel, the prince of devils, Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every king divided against itself is brought desolation, and every city and house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? If I be Bezabel, cast out devils, by whom your children cast them out, therefore they should be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. So the brother had the Spirit of God. The same way, um, the same way, uh, um, what's the name, had um, the, the, Jesus had the Spirit and, and, and um, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had the Spirit, John had the Spirit, Elizabeth and Zechariah had the Spirit. So, Brother Joshua, if he was cast, the, the man that John was re, that rebuked, and the Lord said, don't stop him. Whoever is with me, not for me. Well, you know, the Bible say, now listen, we know that Jesus Christ was only speaking this way. Watch. So, we know the Lord is not going to claim anyone unless they have the spirit. Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if the Lord vouched for that brother, then that, that's how you know he was filled with the spirit. And also, if he was casting out devils, he was casting out by the spirit. You see? So before we go a little bit further, let's read about, let's read about the seven sons of Sceva. Let's go to Acts 19 and verse 11. Let's go to Acts 19 and verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vanguard Jews, exes, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord. Jesus saying, We adore ye by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and a chief priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And then the man whom had the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So you see? That's right, Brother Joshua, because... You got to remember, at that time, the disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit either. You know, so remember, the disciples in the four Gospels and the apostles in the, act, the book of Acts was completely different. Remember, John, remember this. Let me, hold on, brother um, Joshua. Let me give you this verse. I always give Bible. Never give what I think and I feel. Or never what I found on Google, but what the Bible says. I don't copy and paste anything from Google. I, I speak the word. That's why I'm just taking my time getting your verses. Look at Luke 9, 54. Look at Luke 9 and 54. And when disciples James and John saw that they said, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, ye know not what spirit ye are of. You see? So we know they didn't have the spirit in the four gospels. They received the spirit in Acts chapter 2. But the brother that was casting out devils, they didn't, they didn't see him being with Jesus. But we know that the only way that it was possible, the only way that it was possible was by the spirit of God. So that, like you said, Brother Joshua, the Lord corrected them. If they're not for me, then they're against me. So you see him casting out spirits. The spirit of God has to be in him because you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. So that was a good question. Many, but, but the funny thing about it, Brother Joshua, many people have asked me that question. Some of my own brothers and sisters that's um, up here in a, in a message group that I got. I got a message group on Facebook, and it's a lot of us in there. Many I have prayed for and those who are waiting to be prayed for, and they have asked the same question, you know, how was it possible? But we can only answer with Scripture. And we know that, the only way a person can cast out a devil is by the Holy Spirit. You might can, you might can make, you might can, a, a demon might talk to you, 
but it takes the spirit of God to cast it out. Because think about it, the seven sons of Sceva didn't have the Holy Ghost, but the demon was still talking to them, but they couldn't cast him out. He said, who are you? So many people have called me and said, Brother Ronald, I was praying for someone one day and the demon spoke to me. I said, it doesn't take anything for a demon to speak to someone. Read the Bible. Demons were speaking to Jesus Christ without him even casting the demon out of them yet. They were running to him. We know who you are. Have you come to him before our time? So they were, all, they were able to talk. To, the demons were able to talk. But it takes the spirit of God, the finger of God, to cast out a demon. That's the difference. So anyone can, can come and say, someone, can you pray for me, brother? I got a spirit in me. I am this. I did that. I did that. The demon will never leave without the spirit. It's the spirit that makes a demon leave out of a person. So that, that's all that happened. That's right, Brother Joshua. I only speak God's word, brother. That's why I'm telling you, I'm only going to give you Bible, brother. Many people are going to lean to their own understandings and speak outside of God. That's how you know your heart is for God, Brother Joshua, because you recognize that I'm only speaking God's word. Not, I'm not adding any emphasis. I give you all Bible and chapter and verse. Never speak from my own understanding. That's a sin. Woe unto me if I lean on my, my own understandings. I'm stupid. Dumb and ignorant without the knowledge, wisdom, and the power of God. I speak as the Spirit uh, moves through me. Okay, we, um, we're almost done, brothers and sisters. Let's see what we got. Um, let's see what the Lord has for us. Okay, we look, we look at 2 Corinthians 1 and 6. Thessalonians, uh, um, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 4. And look at, let's look at uh, Revelations 2 and 1. Revelations 2 and 1. Revelations 2 and 1. Verse 1 to verse 9. Let's see what the Lord has for us. Look at verse 9 of Revelations chapter 2. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say that they are Jews and are not, but they are synagogue of Satan. That's right. You see? This is why. Look, they were the Lord recognized their tribulation and their poverty. So how can a man remember this the title for this message today? Many things that we're asking today is is, is so many different teachers I already have done. That's why I was telling everybody there's so many teachers that I have that teach on these things. But it's okay. You know, i the Bible say, you know, we're, we're supposed to be patient, you know, and 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 you know, to 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 teach and to admonish one another. So it's it's nothing for me to repeat these things. You know, I love you, brothers and sisters, so it doesn't matter. You know, the question that people have, you know, let's look at first Peter three and 14, first Peter three and 14, first Peter three and 14. Let's see what the Lord has for us. But if you suffer for righteous sake, happy are ye, be not afraid of their terror, neither nor be troubled. Now, when you see the part about suffering in the Bible, it's talking about facing the suffering of people. That's why I say you suffer for their that's why when you see it talk about demons, because a lot, a lot of Christians come to me and say, well, Brother Ronald, you know, I thought the closer you go to God, the more attacks you face. I'm like, no, brother, you're not supposed to be attacked as a believer, not spiritually. You can be attacked by people. The Bible says that we're going to be hated by, 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 um, by all men and by his name, you know, for his name's sake and hate of the world. But you never see, and people always say that the thorn that was given to Paul flesh, they make it sound like it was a demon in this brother. How can it be a demon in someone that has the Holy Spirit? It's either you don't have the Spirit, that's why you have to be delivered so you can receive the Spirit. So there's no way light can be with darkness. It doesn't mix. So the thorn that was given to Paul flesh, this is, see, this is why the Bible says the Spirit searches out everything the deep things of God. The thorn that was given to Paul flesh that wherever he went, Satan stirred the people up around him. That's right. God permitted it. That's why you read in Acts 15, 16, and 17, when he was going different places, he had to keep fleeing, keep fleeing, keep fleeing. He never had rest in any city. That was so he wouldn't get prideful because people were being added to the church daily. They were multiplying. And Paul already walked in pride before he came to God. So God had to make sure he gave him something to keep him from being humble. It wasn't a demon. It wasn't a sickness. It wasn't anything. How can you walk around sick and blind and, and healing the people and he couldn't heal himself? How can you walk around sick and blind and are, are, are have spirits in him and he casting out spirits. That doesn't make any sense. It was the, so he wouldn't get prideful. He told you, so I wouldn't get prideful. A thorn was given to my flesh. 
That means that everywhere he went, he was being beat by people. Remember how, how many times he said he'd been, he, he received 40 lashes by the Jews? Five times. He was shipwrecked, bitten by vipers, you know, stoned, thrown in prison, slapped on his mouth. He experienced much um, affirmity in the flesh. That's what he's telling you. Everywhere he went, they were slapping him, beating him, jumping him. <laughs> you know, no other apostles went through as much what Paul went through. That stone that was given to his flesh. So let's look at, okay, let's, let's, let's keep moving on. Let's look at Matthew 10, verse 22. Matthew 10 and verse 22. But they say that 2019, the year of blessing, the year of increase, the year of breakthrough, the year of favor. How's that? How can a man tell you that? Look at Matthew 10 and 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in the city, flee to another, flee to another. For really I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the seas of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciples is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. But how can a man tell you that 2019 is going to be your increase? When the Bible tells you that you're going to be hated of all men for his name's sake. Your boss is going to hate you. Coworkers are going to hate you. Loved ones, family members. The Bible says he didn't come to bring peace but a sword. That your enemies, your foes will be in your own household. That mothers will be at advance against their daughters. Fight against their sons. That's right. My laws against their daughter-in-laws. So how can a man tell you that 2019, blessings, breakthroughs, favor, everything. It's always material things that they're telling you that's coming to your life. It's always things the flesh wants. Why, you, why they can't tell you to pray more in 2019? Read more. Fast more. Humble yourself more. Pray against pride. Look to be delivered from your afflictions. They don't never tell you things like that. It's always with the flesh. They allure the flesh. That's what, the, that's what Peter talked about, about alluring of the flesh. Okay. Let's look at John 14 and 27. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth you. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's right. You see, peace I give you, not as the world gives unto you. See, only Jesus Christ give you that peace. Okay, let's go to Job 1 and 20. Let's go to Job 1 and 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Come on now. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You see? But let Job, let, let, let people tell you, Job, Job, 2019, Job, your year of increase, your year of breakthrough, your year of favor. Come on, brothers and sisters. Job soldiered on. It never was told to him how long he was going to go through what he went through. He soldiered on and trusted God. He even rebuked his wife. Look at Job 2 and 10. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as a foolish woman, speaketh. What shall we receive, good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did Job not sin with his lips. That's right. You see? So it's not always going to be that's false religion that teaches you. You're going to go through the Bible even saying that the trial of your faith be more pre precious than gold. The Bible said, don't think of it strange. The fiery trials that come to test you, to tempt you, as though something strange has happened to you. It said believers in the world are experiencing the same things. It's in Peter. We must go through this to, 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 to strengthen our faith. Everyone's faith must be tested to show you that God truly is who he say he is, a deliverer, a savior, a healer. We must go through these things. Oh, it's not even working. There we go. We must go through these things for the glory of God. Everyone in the Bible went through. Everything that we went through is for the glory of God. Every believer. That's right, brother. That's why they always ask for money. But the Lord never asks for money. He never even carried the money bag. Judas carried the money bag, not Jesus. Okay, now we get into the end. 
Let's look at 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, duly furnished unto all good works. That's right, Brother Joshua. God doesn't want your money. He wants our heart. That's it. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of scripture might have hope. That's right. We got to learn from what we're reading and know that it was given to us. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understandings. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Revelations 22 and 18, last verses. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. For if any man shall take away from these words of the book of prophecy, God shall take away his part out of this book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things says, shortly I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you all. Now, now that we've seen all of that and we read all the verses, it is a sin to be anxious about 2019. It's a sin to make a new resolution. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Just pray and say to the Lord, your will be done for 2019. Lord, I'm going to pray more. I'm going to read more. I'm going to believe more. I'm going to walk in faith more. I'm going to obey your word. Take more of me, Lord. Give me more of you. Embed the fruits of the spirits in my heart. Take more of me, Lord. Give me more of you. Start the year on your knees and continue until the end. Whatever you go through, give God the glory. Know that he's in control. The same way Job seen that God was in control. If I was in every church right now on the big screen preaching this message, this is what I would be saying. Believers, children of God, rejoice in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let your nation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Whatever you go through in 2019, rejoice. Be exceedingly glad. When you wake up, pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, that hallowed be thy name. Tell the Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Brothers and sisters, in 2019, whatever you go through, see it as an assignment for God. If your car breaks down on the side of the road and you call a tow truck, don't be angry. Don't be upset. You don't serve Satan. You serve God. You're in his care. No man can snatch you out. Right? You're in the bosom of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run into and are safe. This is my message for 2019. So if your phone, if your car breaks down the side of the road and you call the, the man, don't be angry. Don't sin. Don't look at it in a bad light. Look at it as an assignment to speak the word of life into that tow truck guy because he needs it. He's working. He's striving to provide for his family. Tell him that you love him. Give him a hug. Kiss him on both cheeks. Embrace him and tell me Jesus Christ loves him. And I'm praying for you, brother, whatever you're going through. Thank you for coming to rescue me. And when you're sitting there waiting for two hours before the tow truck man get there, be praying in your heart. Oh, Lord, take more of me. Give me more of you. Let the mind that's in Christ be in me. Let me think on things that are holy, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are honest, things that are lovely. If there be any good report, I mean, a good report, if any, any virtue, think on these things. Thank you, Lord, for everything I'm going through. I know my life is in your hand. Nothing can separate from your love of God, nor death, nor life, nor demon, nor nothing. I'm persuaded. Let that be how you follow into this new year. Whatever you go through, see it as an assignment for the glory of God. Look at Job. Job went through what he went through and still worship, not complain. The Bible says it's a sin to murmur and to dispute. So give to the needy. Help the orphans, the widows, the fatherless. Help those who are homeless. Give them a hot plate of food. Give them canned goods. 
Be wise with your finances. Walk in obedience. Walk in wisdom. Study. Continue in fellowship with true believers that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And whatever you go through, say, Lord, let your will be done, not mine. Don't make plans for tomorrow or the next day or the next year. You don't know what tomorrow holds. The evil today is sufficient of. Just trust the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you do these things, brothers and sisters, the Lord before whom I walk will be with you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Go into this year strong, courageous, serving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, obeying his word. No matter what you go through, see it for the glory of God. See it as an assignment for God. Go into this year loving and hugging people, letting love lead. Look around the corner and see who's in need. You're going to go through tribbles. You're going to go through tribulations. My Lord already said it. I will not sit up here and tell you that, that this, this year is going to be your year. You're going to go through tribulations. Your, your faith will be tested. Your faith has to be tested. So it can show that you truly have faith when you don't react in anger, when you don't react in hatred. But when you react according to the word of God, that shows your faith. That's what faith is, believing in the way that Jesus Christ taught us, the gospel. Right? You let the light shine in you that they may see your good works and glorify your father that's in heaven. So your car's going to break down. You're going to need oil change. You're going to have flat tires. These are things that's going to come. Satan will work through your wife, your husband, family members to try to cause you to sin. Be of good cheer. Don't give in. Be strong in the Lord. That's my message. That's a true message. I can't tell you that this year is going to be this and it's going to be that. I don't know. Only God knows. But what I do know, we must go through much tribulation into the kingdom of God. But his grace is sufficient for us. His power, his strength works best in our weakness. So therefore, most gladly will I boast in my infirmities, reproaches, knee persecution, and distress. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. God bless you all. God bless you all. I love you all. And happy new year. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.